Man, this beauty space is out of freaking control. Oh my gosh. Every single week, there is something new in the beauty space as far as conflict. And the big conflict that happened this week was Kathleen Lights, Lights Lacquer, being sued for copyright infringement by a big nail polish brand. It's like, what? I have all of the details for you coming up in just a moment. We also have Elise Myers, who is huge on TikTok, standing up for herself and curly haired people everywhere. And then parents are up in arms in the UK over some choices that the English department made to make up shame their own students. We have all of that and so much more. So hang tight. We are jumping into it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup, where we talk about everything that is happening in the beauty space right now, all in one place. And this week's top news story, the biggest thing that happened was a new lawsuit. Well, it actually has been around for a little while. A lawsuit's been around for a while, but we've just become aware of it because it was just settled this past week. And it was against Kathleen Light's nail polish brand called Light's Lacquer. The only reason why I saw this is because of our What's Up In Makeup Facebook Hunters group. If you would like to join that, there is a link down below, which is basically a place to dump things that you see that you think would be good in the show. So in that group, a video was posted by a woman who has a nail polish channel. Her name is Janixa. Janixa became aware of this because Kathleen Lights posted in her Facebook group, which is called Light Squad, she posted that she was going to be changing some of the names of her polishes for Lights Lacquer. Now, it was very interesting because there was a common thread between all of the names that she was going to change. All the original names were people's names, and all of the names they were changing them to were not people's names. So it's like, why? That's so weird. Why would she do that? That's what I wondered. In the post, Kathleen said, due to unfortunate events, we had to change some names of our polishes. More information will be shared when we can. So Janixa, sounding like being very much like me, she wanted to know more about it. So she looked it up and she found the legal filings for the case. So because she was able to find them, I was also able to find them thanks to her telling me that they existed. If you would like to hear her opinion about the lawsuit, of course, her video is going to be linked down below. But this is going to be my thoughts on this lawsuit. I was able to pay to acquire the documents so that I could give you the most thorough information possible. It's very, very rare to be able to have free access to documents the way that I have access to the Forma uh, bankruptcy case documents. So I did pay to get these, but I will show you screenshots of some of the most uh, relevant information to what we're trying to learn about this case. The case is titled Art of Beauty versus Lights Lacquer LLC, and it is specifically a property rights trade trademark, specifically trademark infringement lawsuit. So what is art of beauty, you may ask? And if you're in the nail polish space, you probably already know this. But if you are not like me, I had to learn that this is the brand Zoya. In the official complaint filed in September of 2022, Art of Beauty, which we will from now on just call Zoya for, you know, make sure we know what we're talking about here. They say that they are seeking to stop Lights Lacquer from engaging in further acts of infringement, as well as damages and injunctive relief. So according to the filing, they were seeking damages for five counts in an amount exceeding $75,000 for each count. And if you are not familiar with Lights Lacquer, it is not a huge brand. It is a smaller nail polish brand. So I would imagine this kind of payout would be absolutely huge for them. So Zoya claims that in August of 2022, they became aware of Kathleen's brand and the names that she was using to sell her nail polishes. And they noticed that some of the names overlapped with some of Zoya's names. They also claimed that some of the colors matched up pretty closely between the Zoya and the Lights Lacquer polishes. So this is the exhibit that they put in to prove that. They showed the shade Mia from Zoya and Mia from Kathleen Lights. And you can see that they are in the same color family. The Lights Lacquer 
blacker one is clearly a bit darker, but they are in the same color family. We've been talking about in recent weeks about first to use in commerce and how important that is in US trademark law. That if you are the first company to use a name in commerce, you are selling it across the United States, then you have some legal protection against that name. Now, I believe Zoya is leading on this hard because only one of the names seems to be trademark and it is that Mia Shade. The trademark for Mia is owned by Zoya and it was filed in September of 2013 and registered in April of 2014. So way before Kathy Kathleen Light, Slight Slacker even existed. But it gets more interesting. Besides having this one trademark and the first to use in commerce, Zoya says that they served Kathleen Lights and Light Slacker a cease and desist letter and had follow-ups after that and that Light Slacker did not respond. Because of that, they felt like their only route was to sue for trademark infringement. About a month after filing, the lawyer for Light Slacker responded to the lawsuit and he had two major points. The first one is that Lights Lacquer is based in Miami, Florida, and that this lawsuit was brought in Zoya's home base of Ohio. And the thing about the U.S. legal system is if you're going to sue in a state court, you have to prove that you have a state-based issue. And Lights Lacquer's lawyer was like, uh, we don't have any operations in Ohio. We're in Miami. Like, this is weird. We're only sold online, so we don't have any stores here. We don't have any employees here. We don't have any home base here. So I don't understand why we're in an Ohio court. The other issue is the one that I thought of right away. And it's like, how can you trademark somebody's name? Like, really? We're going to trademark names now? It's, it was so, it's so, so weird. I'm honestly surprised they got the trademark for Mia because it's a name. So if Mia Farrow decided to launch a nail polish line called Mia, would they sue her? That would be a question. That would be weird. And the lawyer's point was like, Kathleen named the nail polishes after like her mom and her grandma. Like she should be able to do that because it's just a name and there's no reason to search for that for trademark because it's just a name. It's so common. And then Zoya came back and argued against it. And then the lawyer came back and added one more point to it. And the point was that in order to have something like this go through, you have to prove that there was some kind of customer confusion within the state. And they said that Zoya did not present that there was any customer in Ohio that bought a light slacker nail polish instead of a Zoya nail polish because they were confused and meant to buy Zoya. Zoya's lawyer came back and was like, yeah, Lights Lacquer doesn't have any business in Ohio. There's no storefront, but they sell online to customers who live in Ohio. Kathleen markets her products on her YouTube channel, on her Instagram, on Lights Lacquer's Instagram. All of those are marketed to people who live in Ohio, not specifically, but in general, people in Ohio can watch those things and then purchase because of it. This next part is part of the lawsuit, but honestly, I'm not 100% sure how this is relevant to the case. You'll have to tell me if you see it. I don't see it. February 8th, Zoya filed an amended complaint. And in that complaint, they brought up Kathleen's use of the N-word back in 2017. If you don't remember that, she was hanging out with Jacqueline Hill at her house and she was playing a scary VR video game and she had the VR headset on and she was scared of it. And then she said the N-word to the video game. You could hear at the end of the video, Kathleen saying, don't post that. Jacqueline did post it. And there was a huge backlash, understandably, for Kathleen using the N-word. In the lawsuit, they cite the Insider article where Kathleen apologized for using that word. The reason why they say they included this in the lawsuit is that, quote, as a direct and proximate result of Light Slacker's conduct, Art of Beauty and Zoya have suffered damages. And I would love to see the proof of that because if there really were damages of this because of that, wouldn't they have known back then? This was five years ago. So at least within, you know, by 2019, if there were significant damages due to Kathleen's conduct and the similar nail polish name then you think that they would have brought it up back then, but they couldn't have because they said they just realized that Kathleen was selling nail polishes under that name just recently in the past couple of years. Now, bringing it to last week on March 8th, they had a Zoom mediation meeting. It was like a two and a half hour meeting, but they were able to come to an agreement. There are no details, of course, of this agreement. I would love if there were just as many details about the agreement as there are about the lawsuit before, but they're 
just isn't. I'm going to put on the screen for you. Now, I got this wrong last week, but I'm going to try to get it right this week. <laughs> I got my terms mixed up. So this case was dismissed with prejudice, which means that it cannot be brought up again. It is done. It is over. It is concluded. Now, unlike Jaclyn Hill, I do have a direct line to Kathleen. So I reached out to her on Instagram and I sent her the script of what I had set out to say just to see if there was anything she wanted to add to it. And the short of it is that she cannot talk about it and isn't going to be talking about it in the future. It seemed to me for legal reasons. So these are my thoughts on it. Now, I don't know Kathleen very well. I would consider us business acquaintances, but every interaction we've ever had has been very lovely. And I am so sad that this happened to her. Uh, but at the same time, from what I've learned of trademark law over the past few years of really diving into this stuff, it does seem like Zoya has a point as far as their right to stop her from using these names. But really... Is there really competition? Is there really confusion? I personally would highly doubt it. I wish that the court system had put in there the proof that Zoya had to show that there was customer confusion because I didn't see it anywhere in there. It might have been submitted confidentially. I didn't see it. So legally, like, I get it, but I do think that it's weird. And I do think that it's kind of cruddy to go after a smaller brand like this. But that is just my personal opinion. I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments down below. Let's stay in lawsuit land for just two more stories. First is a talc contamination lawsuit based in South Carolina, and the judge did award damages to a woman named Sarah Plant. But what was interesting about this case is that she didn't file it against, directly against the company. She filed it against the talc manufacturer, and that manufacturer is Whitaker, Clark, and Daniels, and they've been ordered to pay her a whopping $29.14 million. What's really sad about this one is that Sarah is only 36 years old and she's been diagnosed with mesothelioma. Her attorneys argued that the cancer was caused by cosmetic products that were contaminated with asbestos through the talc and one of the major brands she was using was Mary Kay. And according to the lawsuit, they say that they have evidence that Mary Kay knew that these products were contaminated and continued to sell the products anyway. Now apparently this has been going on for a while because the claims against Mary Kay that she had have already been settled along with another defendant named Color Techniques. Not part of the trial, but also mentioned were Avon Products, Colgate, and Johnson & Johnson. This was a jury trial and the verdict awarded her $871,000 in past medical expenses as well as $3.2 million in future medical expenses and $20 million dollars for pain and suffering plus five million dollars for a loss of consortium and i get asked a lot about talc and cosmetics and whether should we should be afraid of it and i do think that is up to the individual consumer to decide but what it comes down to is that when you're buying inexpensive talc that is mined in a not careful way sometimes it can be contaminated with asbestos and if that asbestos level is high enough and the person uses the product for long enough things like this, it looks like, can happen. So I'm actually really glad that these companies are being held accountable because maybe they'll test their cheap-ass talc from now on to avoid these kinds of problems. It really is just that simple to make sure that you test your talc for asbestos contamination. That's all they gotta do. And in prior shows of What's Up Makeup, we've talked about how the FDA has pulled many, many products from the shelves and tested these talc-based products for contamination. Usually they find absolutely nothing thing. Occasionally, they have found something in very inexpensive products from brands like Claire's and Justice, which I don't think exists anymore. Uh, City Color, I believe, was one of the brands where they found asbestos in the makeup. So you, of course, have to decide what you want to do for you. But for me, I just stay away from very cheaply made, cheaply sold cosmetics because that is a clue to me that they may be using less safe ingredients. 
Just a very, very fast Forma update. It really is very small because nothing's really happening this week. The 21st of March is the next big court hearing for the Forma bankruptcy lawsuit with like Jacqueline Cosmetics and Morphe and all of that. That is coming. But there is one little tidbit that I did want to share. It is with a company called RJ Display Manufacturing. They are seeking payment of $68,000 from Forma. And they feel like before they, you know, the bankruptcy happens, they want to get their money. And this is why they're saying that. They say that Forma essentially was fraudulently tricked into paying the money that was supposed to be meant for R&J display manufacturing to somebody else. And Forma was like, no, don't worry about it. Like our insurance covers this. We're going to be fine. And they ended up paying about $10,000 of the money they owed, but never paid the rest of it. And what they're saying is, is that if Forma got the insurance money for this fraud thing, that they should get the money and Forma shouldn't be able to get the insurance money. <laughs> it's like they shouldn't be able to keep that. Like it was supposed to go somewhere and it was supposed to go to paying this display manufacturing company. R&J is just worried that once they declare bankruptcy that they're just never going to see their money. So they wanted to throw their hat in the ring and say, hey, this is our story. Can we get our money? Because we would really like that. And in today's TikTok is toxic, but also inspiring news, we have the lovely Elise Myers. If you are not familiar with her, she's a pretty badass comedian. She is known for her compassion and her wit and her storytelling. And I personally very much enjoy her content. As big influencers do, Elise went to a red carpet event. It was called the Podcast Academy Excellence in Audio Awards. She's wearing this gorgeous satin slip dress and these little pumps and she looked real, real cute and she had her hair pulled back in a bun. And then the critiques started coming in about her naturally curly hair. And being the sensitive soul that Elise is, she responded in a video on TikTok that has hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views. It might have a million views at this point. Elise's videos normally do. The amount of people that have made it their life's mission to let me know that they do not like my hair is so incredible. And I have a solution for both of us. Next time you go into the hairdresser, don't give them a photo of me and my hair as inspiration for your next haircut. And then I think it'll work out great. And this is the thing, is when people are commenting on TikTok and even on YouTube, I feel like sometimes comments are good intended, but they just come out in the wrong way. And I think that's what happened here with the comment to Elise. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the screen for you. Her response said, please imagine someone telling you that your natural hair is a shock and it took a few days, but they've learned to accept it. And I can see Elise being offended by this, but it, do it this doesn't sound malicious to me. I guess because being a neurodivergent person myself, sometimes I don't say things quite the right way. So maybe I'm giving this person a little too much grace, but I can see where it hurt Elisa's feelings. It turns out she wasn't even going to wear her hair like that that day, but she said in a response to another person who responded on TikTok, she said that she was having like a mini crisis before she had to go out and that's just kind of the hair she ended up with. In an interview with People Magazine, Elise said that she's been bullied since she was a kid about her hair, but she's decided decided recently to embrace it. And this is what she said, quote, it was raising my son that really made me look into this season of, okay, either I'm going to fully accept myself or I'm not. And I've got to decide that now because he's starting to understand what's going on around him. And my hair felt like a really good place to start with that. This is what I don't understand. I don't understand why people can't just let people live. Like, it's not your hair. Like, let people have their hair. You know, like, we don't need to comment on the way that people look like that. You know, I can't tell you the number of people that came to my YouTube channel when I had gray hair and were telling me that I needed to cover it, that it made me look old, that it looked bad, that I would just be so pretty if I dyed my hair, you know, like things like that. It's just like, it's really disturbing because I don't understand where it becomes someone else's business, how someone grows their hair out of their head. It's one thing somebody asks, if I was like, hey, how do you like my hair? And you answered, that's different. But the unsolicited stuff, I think we as a society need to collectively be like, you know what? It's not our business. If you don't like someone's hair, that's fine. You don't have to have that hair. It's their hair. It's not your hair. So it's totally fine. Why can't we just let people live? But I will tell you that the U.S. does not corner the market on being a 
to people for how they just want to live their lives. This is a worldwide problem, and our story today focuses on a school in the UK. A school in Worcester is facing backlash from parents and students, and this is why. First, they took the mirrors out of the girls' bathrooms. They were saying that the older girls were spending too much time in the mirror and they were blocking the way to the stalls. So once they removed the mirrors, the English teacher was like, hey, let's make this into an activity. And they had the kids write posters and then put them up in the bathrooms where the mirrors used to be. These were meant to be inspirational this is awful. So the poster said things like Make makeup is a harmful drug that once you start using, you'll feel ugly without. And one suggested that if girls wore comfortable clothes and no makeup, quote, guys would have no choice but to fall for girls because of natural beauty. Ew! Ew! There's so much ew here! The school is the Christopher Whitehead Language College. And the head teacher, his name is Neil Morris. Are we surprised that this is a man who does not wear makeup? He said that he, you know, he didn't really apologize. All he sees wrong was that maybe they shouldn't have put him in the bathrooms. Maybe they should have just put him in the classrooms instead. That was the big mistake. Just no awareness. No awareness. As far as the parents go, it's reported that one of the parents said that it was controlling behavior and a violation. Another parent said that the quotes were degrading and not inspirational at all. The school had held a meeting with 26 students and two parents to discuss the concerns and they'll have a, the student council come up with an action plan. And this is just, this is the thing, is it perpetuates the stereotype that people wear makeup in order to impress other people. And that it's never for the art of it. It's never for a personal reason. It's only to get a man. And that is clearly not real. I mean, maybe it's real for some people, but it is definitely not real across the board. And perpetuating these kinds of stereotypes against women to teenage girls is absolutely horrible. So I'm really glad that this is being addressed and hopefully we don't see anything like this happen ever again. I doubt that's true, though. I'm sure we'll see some version of it at some point. Now, we've seen a lot of weird collabs here on What's Up In Makeup. They used to be just April Fool's jokes. They, they were just funny, you know, and now they're real. Companies are taking these things to the next level. And if you were not aware, <laughs> a couple of days ago was National Ranch Day. Wingstop had this wonderful idea and it was so popular that within the first hour they didn't have any more left and it was a collab with a company called Buff City Soap to create a bar soap inspired by ranch sauce sold at Wingstop. Yes you heard that right it is ranch scented soap. Because that's what you always wanted to smell like, right? It was complete with a little sprinkling of dill on the top and a little tiny little celery stick and a little carrot stick sticking out of it. And the tagline for the soap was, bath time is now a big dill. <laughs> and if you're like me, you're probably wondering, what does ranch soap actually smell like? Well, according to Wingstop and Buff City Soap, it has a mix of buttermilk, garlic, onion, and herb scents. And I know you just wanted to clean your body and come out of the shower smelling like onions and garlic and herbs because that's our goal, right? So within the next couple of weeks, whenever Wingstop mails these things out, there will be people who will wash their body and end up smelling like ranch dressing. And hopefully they are far away from us. But I will admit, can I admit something to you? You can't tell anybody. I did go on the Wingstop website and try to get one, but they were all sold out. It was pure curiosity, okay? I just wanted to see what it smelled like. Don't judge me. All right, my friend, it is time to move into the product report talking about new releases that launched this week. Not a ton, but some things that I did want to highlight, starting off with ColourPop. They now have build your own blush palettes. So what you do is you go onto their website and you add the little magnetic palette. It's 10 bucks and then you can add up to six cheek shades. So it's either blush, bronzer, or highlight. And I think it's pretty smart. I think it's nice for people to be able to pick out their own shades. I wonder if magnetic palettes are gonna come back. I feel like they had like their big thing 
thing and then there was some drama with the major company that made them it was called Z palette and then they kind of died off but I'm curious to see whether more people are going to do magnetic palettes coming up soon because of this if this does well over at Sephora a new product by Rare Beauty it's a new version of their eyeshadow palette it is called give yourself grace it is $29 they say it is a sleek eyeshadow palette with seven rich rosy shades in a range of lasting crease resistant finishes inspired by the iconic soft pinch liquid blush it is a cute color story I have to admit I did try a rare beauty eyeshadow palette when they first launched and I was not a fan have they gotten better that's the question I have for you Ole Henriksen is getting into the color cosmetics realm I think this might be the first color cosmetics item they've launched but I could definitely be wrong there they might have a concealer actually but this is a color corrector it is the banana bright plus vitamin cc eye sticks they're $34 each three different shades for different shades of under eye discoloration so from purple to blue and they have a really nice guide on there to help you decide which one is best for you then we have a new product from Kosas it is the sun show glowy warmth talc free baked bronzer six shades Shades, $35. I think that sounds really cool to have like a shimmery bronzer. I feel like we haven't we just kind of had a lull and only had matte bronzers. Well, mostly matte bronzers for a while. So it's nice to see some more shimmery bronzers coming out. And then quite a few products coming soon to Sephora. Let's talk about the Cali Ray Endless Sunset Face and Eyeshadow Talc Free Palette. $48. They say it is a clean, talc-free, multi-purpose palette in a sustainable bamboo compact. It's really cute. I really like the bamboo compact. It has seven curated shades to create looks that range from barely there to sultry and sexy. Does this look like, okay, y'all tell me, does this look like Tarte Circa 2016? Because that is exactly what it looks like to me. And what's weird about this is it looks like this would only look good on like a blonde, on a very light-skinned, pinky undertoned blonde but they show it on people of many skin tones and I would really love to see someone that doesn't have the coloring of Pamela Anderson try this out to see if it actually works on multiple skin tones because it looks real real light but that will not happen until March 14th when it launches now next up we have from Too Faced these are listed as coming soon with no specific date I would imagine will happen within the next week we have the Born This Way Healthy Glow SPF 30 moisturizing skin tint $42. They say it's an oil-free nourishing serum foundation with up to 24-hour wear and hydration and SPF 30 protection for healthy glowing skin. It does come in 18 shades. Nice gradient there. Packaging is really cute. I think it's nice to see Too Faced coming out with something that's not like a matte flat foundation. It's, it's cool to see them coming out with something just a little bit different. But just a friendly reminder, SPF needs to be reapplied. So don't count on this SPF 30, mostly because it needs to be reapplied, but also because you you can't really put on as much SPF as you need with a color cosmetic product as you would with like an actual sunscreen. So make sure you use this kind of as extra, like an extra layer of sunscreen and not as your only sunscreen if you're going to be out during the day. They're also releasing a new lip liner. It is the Lip Injection Extreme Lip Shaper Plumping Lip Liner. $24, six shades. They say it's a long wear, super plumping, medium to full coverage, demi matte lip liner, supercharged with innovative lip injection volumizing technology. So this is one of those where there's tons of incentivized reviews before launch and most people are saying that it does plump. There's some really nice pictures over there, but some people are saying that the tingling is too intense, kind of like the lip injection extreme is really intense for some people. It sounds like that's what's in these lip liners, so just be aware. Then over at Say, they also have a foundation coming out. It is the Glowy Super Skin Lightweight Hydra Bounce Serum Foundation, $40, 36 shades in a very nice even gradient. It will be available on March 6th online and in store on March 20th. First. But what I found interesting about this is usually serum foundations are like light to medium coverage. This one is medium buildable coverage for a luminous finish. And they also say it blends easily for a hydrated and seamless second skin appearance. I am really curious to see how medium buildable serum foundation is going to be. Is there like less serum in it? Is it like what what is is this more of a foundation that is using the word serum? 
just for like marketing purposes. I'm very, very interested to see what happens with this one. And if you are interested in this, they're also selling a brush. It is the base foundation brush and it's 26 bucks. Now I might be biased because the only product I've ever tried from Refi was the weird lip liner, like silicone lip product that was absolutely awful and crumbly and terrible. So when I see Refi do things, sometimes I'm like, why are, why are we doing this? Like I love creativity, but not in a way that's not functional like that lip product is. You'll have to tell me what you think of this one. This is the Brow Tint Eyebrow Gel, $24, four shades. What's the bally thing? What Do we need a bally thing for our brows or is that just going to make a hot mess around the edges of the brow? That's what I think might end up happening. Like there's nothing wrong with the little spoolie that's the shape of a brow. Why do we need to make it into a bally thing? I don't know. It's weird. Creativity is great, but it's got to be functional. You know what I'm saying? So that is going to be available online March 21st. I think I'm going to skip it. Moving over to Ulta, we have a new eyeshadow palette from NARS. Okay, this is the Laguna Eyeshadow Quad. It's $49. It's a four pan eyeshadow palette for $49. But it gets worse because it also says that it's a travel palette. Now, I understand NARS is at a different price point. It's at a higher price point. We expect slightly higher prices. But the last eyeshadow palette they put out was called the Orgasm Rising palette. It had nine shades and was also $49 and did not say that it was travel size. So I don't know what is happening over there and why this needs to be $49. It makes, it makes zero sense to me. And honestly, I'm not sure if this next thing is new or not, but I want to mention it. It's just the shade extension of the Afterglow Lip Balm in the shade Laguna. It's 28 bucks. This next product, I'm actually surprised it took them this long to come out with this. This is the It Cosmetics Superhero Volumizing Waterproof Mascara. $26. Why, why did it take so long? I don't know. That's a very popular mascara. I'm loving the blue packaging. I hope this works very, very well for the people that love It Cosmetics Superhero. Hopefully it is fantastic. Now y'all know I am still a 2014 girl at heart and I am always rooting for those brands that I loved back then and Stila is one of them. They came out with a new lip product and I really hope that this is a hit for them. This is the Calligraphy Lip Stain. It's $25, eight shades. They say Stila's Calligraphy Lip Stain is a revolutionary double duty lip stain that lines lips with precision while providing a full sweep of soft buildable color. So you can see in the picture it almost looks like a tongue depressor. It's it's like thin and then you flip it and it's like a paddle almost. It's like a like a popsicle stick. It's super, super freaking weird. It looks like it's going to be like a wash of color rather than something that's opaque. But that's not a bad thing. It's actually pretty trendy for that whole like popsicle kind of look. So I'm really hoping this is a good one for Stila. It's weird. But the question is, is it like Refi with the bally eyebrow tip thing? Like, is it a usable weird? We'll just have to wait and see on that one. I may have to get one and try it out because I'm very curious. Just three more brands. Too Faced last week released their Spritz eyeshadow palette on their website. It is now at Ulta. It's $59. It is a very tropical color story and they say it smells like summer spritz. And I wondered what summer spritz smells like. And I'm very lucky to be able to tell you because Too Faced was kind enough to send this over in PR. This is the first, let me count it, the first, first time Too Faced has sent me a palette right when it launched. I have never gotten one. I usually get them months after they launch. So I'm very thankful to be able to tell you what this smells like. It'll be just a second in PR or purchase product of the week. It's what's on my eyes today. But before that, let's go over to Live Tinted. We have the Hue Lip Liquid Lip Creme, 12 shades, $22 each. They say it is a long-lasting, non-drying matte lip color, flexible enough to smile with you, infused with hyaluronic acid and a hobo oil for a soft, comfortable, moisturized finish. I'm all for the matte and comfortable. Give me the matte and comfortable. Bring on the matte and comfortable. I'm hoping this lives up to that claim. And then finally, Kiko Milano has released their spring collection. It is called Beauty Essentials. Prices range from $15.99 to $19.99. There's a two-in-one blurring primer and perfecting powder. Trio eyeshadow in three shades. It's one of those stacked shadows where it's like a little tower. And then there's the Silky Luminous Blush, the 3D Effect Lip Gloss, Silky Matte Bronzer, Glowy Face and Body Highlighter, shi Hydrating Shiny Lipstick, three-in-one, 12-hour long-lasting eyeshadow and eye pencil. And then the Color Flush, three-in-one, all over. And this is for both eyes and lips, but it looks like it's really for lips, but you can also use it for eyes because those, those, mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. But what I also don't know about is like the packaging is super cute on this. It's very cute. 
but I really wish that they would expand their shade range. It's like, this gives me very, like, for white people by white people. And I just, it's awkward and weird, and I just, I just wish that they would expand just a little bit more. It's, it's kind of bleh. Even just making one more shade of things to make it so that more people can access the brand. I think that would be a nice thing to do. All right, PR purchase product of the week. Let's talk about the Too Faced Italian Spritz palette. First, let's talk about the scent because you know I love my scented makeup. It's very grapefruit scented. That is the primary scent. I would say grapefruit with a hint of orange and an even smaller hint of lemon. It smells nice. It smells like some kind of bubbly Sprite-based mixed drink. The shade selection is, of course, lots of natural shades with some colors thrown in there. That's what Too Faced does best. On my eyes today, I have Toasted in Tuscany, Espresso Yourself, and Feeling Saucy up in my crease, up in the crease. And then I have on my lid, Lake Como and Lake and Bake and a little bit of Gelato. I am getting ready for a worst product at Ulta video. So on my lips today, I used, and I got this as a free gift with my purchase at Ulta. This is the Ulta Beauty Lip Oil. I used that in combination with some of these shadows to create my lip color today. I used Espresso Yourself as the main shade, and then I used a little bit of Capri Fun in the center, and I think it came out really, really nice. Now, speaking of that video, I'm also trying today a very expensive BB cream. It made me cringe when I purchased this. This is the Jane Iredale Glow Time Pro BB BB cream and this was the worst rated complexion product at Ulta and I will have more to say on this but I will initially tell you that the coverage is way more full than I expected it to be so a full review on this and the rest of the products that I purchased from Ulta it'll be in the next couple of weeks once I give it some time for me to try the product so I can really give you a full review very notable sales this week because it is inching up on spring we know that we have the Ulta 21 days of beauty for spring of 2023. It is here. It starts today. This week's deals include 50% off from brands like Tarte, Peach and Lily, Elemis, Urban Decay, REM Beauty, Lancome, Dermablend, Nude Sticks, Elizabeth Arden, Stila, Murad, Lorox, Trivectin, Too Faced, Zero Vitale, Iconic London, and more. And that's just this week. It's going to be continuing for the next 21 days. In order to compete with that, Sephora has their spring savings event. It is April 14th through the 20th. 24th. During that time period, it'll be 30% off Sephora brand items. That is for everybody. And then 20% off for Rouge during the entire sale time. And then from the 18th to the 24th, VIBs will get 15% off and Beauty Insiders will get 10% off. Around the rest of the interwebs, we have Bare Minerals, 30% off sale using code EXTRA30. 30% 30 off site-wide over Urban Decay, 20% off over at Hindash, and 30% off site-wide plus free shipping over at Tarte. And finally, let us talk about our artist shout out of the week. Allow me to introduce you to Bo, who is a self-described drag clown. Very, very cool. Very different from other artists I've featured here. So let's go ahead and jump into their first look. This one is totally giving me like a femme kiss vibe. Is it, Are you getting that from this? That's what I'm getting. They are so good at symmetry and the balance of everything. I love that little hint of blush to complement the lips. And I also love the silver that they they use within the shapes around the eyes. Very, very cool. The second look, to me, doesn't even look real. <laughs> I think I think it's the blue accent part that's my favorite, but I also love the way that they did the brows, just like arching up to the high heavens, going toward the temples. And then the lashes. Oh my gosh, to die for. Incredible. Third look, finally. This red and white look is so cool. I love how they went hard on the gloss in the red part and then contrasted it with the super matte white face. It really looks like something you would see in an art museum and that's the way the entire Instagram page is. So if you would like to go follow Bo, I have linked their Instagram down below. You can go ahead and check it out. I know I just followed them. I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with next. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching and of course,
course, thank you as always to the What's Up and Makeup Facebook Hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you so, so, so much. Our chat today is going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We're going to be hanging out, talking about makeup, talking about the community. If you would like to join us, I would love to have you be live in our conversation. But if you've got stuff to do, you got stuff going on, it is so easy to listen to on the replay. All you need to do if you're subscribed is just go to your subscription fee. It should be right there for you. Very easy to find. But if you're not subscribed, you do have to jump through a couple of hoops to get there. You're going to go to my channel page. You're going to click on the live tab. And that is where all of my live streams are housed if you would like to watch it or just listen to it. They're very good listening to while you're doing other things. I always read everything to you. I am looking at turning these into a podcast format, but YouTube is looking at starting a podcast format on the platform. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen with that. So I've kind of put it on hold to see what YouTube does with that. I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks, they'll, you know, let us know what they're doing as far as the podcast format. And if I can host it on YouTube through the channel, that would be fantastic. If not, I'm probably just going to take the audio and upload it through a different format. Uh, but we will see. I am, I've told you about it a few weeks ago and I wanted to give you an update on that. So with that being said, if you would like to hang out a little longer because you enjoyed this so much, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode of What's Up and Makeup down there. YouTube's going to pick one special for you at the top, but if you do need to go, no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did and mad love to you. I will see you in a video very, very soon.